Hello, everybody. Welcome to another episode of Erickson TV. Curtis here with Lauren. Hello, Lauren. Hey, everybody. Hey, Lauren. Uh, since we're kind of winding down on the uh, tax filing deadline, I thought we would uh, uh, talk about a uh, kind of a, a concept of investing, but along with the impact of the taxation of it. All right. Um, for those of you that have not filed yet, do not worry. You can still use a, an extension for up to six months. So nothing, no reason to panic as you watch this video. But uh, uh, right now, the buzzword for investing. Uh, People are looking for stocks with high dividend uh, right. yields or high dividend returns, and uh, it, it's a natural progression that makes sense because people are frustrated with the low amount of interest being paid on mm -hmm. bank accounts and CDs and things like that. Um, we don't propose, you know. First of all, our caveat is we don't propose that you just pick a stock because of a high dividend right. yield. Uh, in fact, we, you know, we we always talk about a diversified portfolio. But um, as but the, the impact of taxation of dividends is, is very meaningful because. There's, there's two kinds of dividends. There's what's called a qualified dividend, and then there's a non-qualified dividend. And uh, a non-qualified dividend is simply sim similar to interest income. It's taxed at your highest ordinary income right. tax marginal tax rate. And under the fiscal cliff tax legislation, that's very significant because for, for high income taxpayers, it could be as high as almost 40%. Right. Uh, while a qualified dividend is taxed similar to a long-term capital gain, where you're uh, uh, generally capped at a 15% annual tax rate, so right. you know I think we both would agree that's significant. Okay, difference. it's a big difference. Um, so I thought I'd just really briefly I would talk about some of the differences between what makes it a qualified dividend versus a non-qualified dividend. First of all, if you have like a credit union account or you have one of those bank accounts that that's that that is really just a a, a cash or savings type of account. Right. A lot of times they say, they call it a dividend. Right. Uh, like this oh, is your true. dividend yield. Right. That's technically not a dividend. That really is interest. That's, that's, right. And so that is not going to ever be a qualified dividend. Right. Okay. Uh, the second uh, part of it is uh, some some to be a qualified dividend, you have to have you have to you have to be investing in qualified corporations that are either domestic corporations based in the U.S. or specific qualified foreign corporations. So, if your underlying investment is not set up as a corporation, or 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 if it's potentially an overseas company, that that may mean that it's not going to be a qualified dividend. And this also right. comes into a play where a lot of people uh, invest in things like limited partnerships and exactly. uh, yeah. things like that, and also real estate investment trusts. Mm -hmm. Those generally are never going to be a qualified dividend. Right, and they are very very tax inefficient. Right, very much so. And then the other issue is you could also be investing in, in a company that would ne normally be a qualified dividend, but you because you're, rap you're trading stock or you're, you're rapidly trading stock, you have to hold the stock more than 60 days during the 121 day period that begins the, the X dividend date. So right. in, without getting too, too much technical, it just means that if you're rapidly going in and out of companies, there's a very good chance that even if it's a qualified company, they, that the the, the uh, 1099 will show it's a non-qualified right. dividend. So and that means that if you're invested in a mutual fund where they're doing a lot of trading, in, and you're investing in that in a taxable account, it can drive your taxes up, your taxes, right? Regardless of whatever the fund has to pay. Right. And to, to end this episode, I thought I would I would just put a little plug in for the uh, the mythology that we like to uh, have our clients invest in and include in our own money. We believe in uh, passive investing uh, with uh, an index of many companies spanned around the globe and from from real life experience the a high the a high percentage of the dividends being realized in our clients portfolios are qualified dividends and because we're not doing the rapid trading within and right. out of the portfolios we are uh, rarely if ever uh, causing a qualified dividend to be non-qualified right so um, so I think in the nutshell if you're going to be getting a return it'd be better to be paying let's say the lowest tax rate versus the potential higher tax rate. right any, any final comments not too much. Yeah. That pretty much covers it. Yeah. I mean, that's a, that's a kind of a, a topic that is difficult for a lot of people to understand. And I think when most people see it on a statement, it's not the sort of thing that they would think about very much. But it makes a pretty big difference in terms of how much taxes you pay. Yeah, that's what I was going to follow up with. What Lauren just said to finish this off is that uh, when people look at your investment return, you also should be looking at the tax cost of that investment return. So thank you very much for watching this episode of Erickson TV. We'll see you next time. Bye now. See you next time.